Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be continuing our moment frame design series with part three, looking at the foundation design. So in the previous videos, right, we looked at the member design of the moment frame, and then also we looked at the connection, de connection design between the beam and the column. And now for this last video, we're going to be taking a look at the foundation design. So what we'll be doing is we'll be taking the reaction forces from the model um, and then we'll be using CalcBook um, and ACI 318-19 to design our footing. So we'll be looking at the bearing pressure, sliding and overturning, right? And that'll all be using allowable uh, stress design loads, ASD loading. And then for the, um, the uh, uh, strength checks, we'll be looking at one-way shear, two-way shear, and flexure, and that will all be using LRFD loading. So if we take a look at our reactions from the model, right, this is an output from our model, um, looking at joint one and joint three, which are the uh, base of each of the columns. And then we have our F1, F2, and F3. F1 is, uh, is our lateral, so our X direction. Uh, F3 is our vertical. And then there's uh, no force in F2, which is out of plane. So um, we have our loads here for live uh, EX, which is our, our earthquake lateral, and then our total dead load. Um, and the reason that we have these separated out is that we need to have uh, the nominal load so that we can run both the ASD and LRFD load combinations. So if we sort of summarize those, right, for the worst case downward and the worst case uplift, um, these are our forces that we're going to be looking at. Pretty much they're, they're mostly the same except for our earthquake rate. We have to look at both um, the downward side, so that 12.9 kips uh, going down, and then also 12.9 kips going upwards. Um, so we'll take a look at that when we do our foundation design. Um, right, we don't have any moment because we use pin bases in our uh, assumptions, so we, we do not have any moment at the top of the foundation. And then one thing to note, right, is that uh, we are not including the vertical seismic loading. So that 0.2 SDS, um, we do not include that in this, uh, in this example. Um, and the last thing there on the lower right-hand corner, we have some soil design parameters, right? So we have our allowable uh, vertical bearing pressure of 2,000 PSF, and we are allowed a one-third increase for uh, seismic or wind loading. And then we have a lateral bearing pressure of 150 PSF per foot depth. And again, we also get a one-third increase uh, for wind and seismic. Our coefficient of friction uh, is 0 0.25, and then we are going to... Um, put our footing uh, underneath the soil so we'll have two feet uh, of soil above the top of the footing. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So we go ahead and click into our uh, concrete design module, into our standalone designs, and then we'll click into the spread footing design module and open that up. Okay, so once we've got that open, we can start to select some of our input parameters. So first thing we we'll want to do is um, select yes for including the footing weight and the pedestal weight. We want that to resist overturning um, and sliding. We want to include soil weight. We're going to be including that two feet of soil. Uh, we'll be checking sliding and we will be checking overturning. So checking both of those. Those options just allow you to sort of limit some of the calculation output if you don't need to check those two items. Um, our lateral loads are due to seismic, so we'll select yes. Uh, we have a friction coefficient that we'll use, and then we are going to use the top one foot of soil in the lateral calculation. So that has to do with sort of what your constraint is over the soil. If you have a slab or uh, asphalt or something like that, typically the geotechnical engineer will allow you to use the first foot. Otherwise, uh, they'll say that you cannot use that first foot uh, for lateral resistance. So um, we're going to assume yes for now. Uh, our footing size, right, we're designing this, so let's just start with something close. So we'll start with a 7 foot by 7 foot. That seems pretty reasonable for this type of loading. Um, we have a uh, 2 feet of soil above the top of the foundation. Our pedestal, we'll just assume it's 18 inches by 18 inches. And we want it to be basically the same height as the soil, maybe a little bit taller, but 2 feet is fine. Um, and the pedestal, we're going to assume, is concentric with the foundation, so there's no eccentricity there. For the longitudinal reinforcement, we'll just assume number seven bars, um, and then we'll just assume spacing at 12 inches. So if we have um, a seven foot wide footing, we will assume um, eight bars. Okay, then we need to update our soil parameters. So we have a uh, two KSF allowable for dead plus live, and then we get a third increase. So that'll be um, 2.667 KSF. I'm not gonna change the unit weight of soil our lateral uh, soil bearing pressure, we uh, can increase that to 0 
and then we also get a one-third increase uh, on that for our seismic and wind, so we'll go to 0 0.2. And then our friction coefficient is going to be 0 0.25. All right, so we've got our soil parameters entered. We're going to leave our material properties as is. Uh, we'll go over to the demand side. We are going to be using the ASCE 716, right, because we are going to be um, inputting nominal loads so that we can get both the ASD load combinations and the LRFD load combinations. Uh, we don't have any moment, right, because it's a pin base. So we just have our axial loads due to dead is 3.8. Um, our axial load due to live is 3.2. And then our axial load due to seismic is it's plus or minus 12.9, um, but we're going to assume that the minus is going to control, right? The uplift is probably going to control our overturning and sliding. So we'll go ahead and enter that in as a minus. And then our shear demand, um, right? We have the small loads due to the kick from the vertical load. So we have uh, 0.28 dead load uh, shear demand and 0 0.3 live load shear demand. And then our lateral force due to seismic, which is the big one, right? That's 7.5 kips. And remember that 7.5 kips is applied at the top of the pedestal. So it creates an additional overturning moment that we'll calculate. Um, so right at first glance, it looks like we do have an issue with overturning. So when we get there, we will take a look and see how we can adjust our inputs to, uh, to resolve that. So let's start going through our capacity side of things. Um, right, first thing we want to do is take a look at some additional loading calculations, right? So the, we decided to include the footing and the pedestal weight. So we'll go ahead and add those in plus the soil. So, so we get a total dead load of about 27 kips. Um, and then these uh, expandable menus here uh, just showcase what the critical load combination is for each check. So for our uh, dead plus live, or sorry, excuse me, for our um, ASD loading for bearing pressure for just dead plus live, right, that's just going to be D plus L. And then for our overturning, um, right, that's going to be the, the least amount of dead loads. So that's why we have this 0 0.6 dead plus 0.7 E. So that gives us our the axial demand um, during overturning. And then also another one for bearing here, but considering seismic or wind. Um, and then we have our strength uh, critical combinations for checking flexor, one-way shear, and two-way shear. And we have that for each load that we've applied. So we have it for shear and moment as well. Um, so we can go through that same thing and see what the shear loads are for those same critical load combinations. Okay, so let's go ahead and check our bearing pressure, right? It doesn't control. We can just take a look and see where we are. Um, so for dead plus live, we do get a very, very small eccentricity, right? 0 0.06 feet of eccentricity uh, just because of that small lateral load due to the kick. Um, but our bearing pressure is, is fairly small, 0 0.65 KSF. And then we do another check for our bearing pressure um, for seismic or wind, right? Because we have that one third increase. So we sort of have two checks that we need to do for that. Um, we calculate the total uh, moment there, get our eccentricity, which is bigger. Um, and then we have our bearing pressure based on that, which we do have a little bit of uplift here. Um, and we get 0.84 KSF. Check our, our flexure um, and shear. Um, right with this, we have to actually recalculate our bearing pressure um, with the strength loads. Um, so that gets us our bearing pressures in the LRFD load combination so that we can calculate the moment demand. Um, we calculate the moment demand both left and right of the pedestal if it applies. And we have our controlling demand. And then um, of 21 of 22 kip feet roughly and then we can go through and check our one-way and two-way shear we did a, a detailed uh, foundation design so I'm, I'm kind of going through these quickly but you can take a look at the um, detailed video for the uh, these these calculations but we'll just kind of open these menus up and take a look at our one and two-way shear design and then we move to our capacity side right so we check our sliding Right, so we decided we can use that top one foot. So we have our total depth of soil is the, the depth of soil above the foundation plus the foundation depth, so we get three and a half feet. We calculate the, um, the bearing pressure at the top and at the bottom of the footing so we can get that, that distribution. Calculate the total um, pressure um, due to passive, uh, total resistance due to passive pressure. And then we calculate our friction uh, resistance add those two up and we get about seven and a half kips of sliding resistance and we compare that with our applied load of 7.53 kips and so we have a 
um, a factor of safety of slide A of 1.4. So this actually is less than our 1.5. So we'll see once we solve the overturning issue if we still have an issue with uh, sliding. But it, usually when we will solve this overturning, it will probably solve this sliding as well because we're going to have to make things bigger or deeper. So we'll see how that looks. Uh, okay, so for overturning, right, which is our, our controlling issue right now, let's take a look at that. So we calculate our total moment on the foundation, about 19 kip feet. Um, and then we calculate our total resisting moment, which is just going to be the total load uh, times half of the width, which is 24 and a half. Um, but that, even though the, the, the resisting moment is greater than the overturning moment, we um, had set our factor of safety at 1.5, so we don't meet that yet. So we could either ask the geotech to, to reduce the factor of safety, which they probably won't do, um, but otherwise, we need to change some things here. So the easiest thing is just to make the footing a little bit bigger. So let's just go up one foot inside in size here. So we'll make it eight feet by eight feet instead. Let's see if that solves it. So that brings us down to 0 0.86. And I think if we go back to our sliding, right, that increased our sliding capacity as well to 1.73 factor of safety. So that solved both of our issues with sliding and overturning. Um, and then we can go through and check our flexural capacity. Uh, I won't go too into detail here. This is just a concrete section calculation. Uh, we've done detailed videos on this as well. We can link those below. Um, and then our one-way and two-way shear checks um, for capacity. We've also included this in detail in other videos. Uh, but we go through and check all of that and check our two-way shear capacity, all the different limits here we have for that. And we are good. So this foundation does work with the loading now that we've increased the size uh, to an 8 foot by 8 foot footing. This concludes our uh, moment design series um, in CalcBook. We really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any ideas for uh, new videos or new design modules in CalcBook, please let us know in the comments below. And we'll see you next time.